The only thing we're going to keep is our hard drive with our Windows installed on it. And we're going to take it and put it in another system, a new motherboard, PSU, graphics card, everything, processor, RAM, just new. And we're going to make it work because we can make it work, especially with Windows 10, it's not a big problem. We'll just need to do uh, little things here and there to make sure it's actually working. So let's go. There we have my new system. And despite popular belief that this uh, looks uh, more shitty than this thing, which is my current setup, this uh, computer is uh, a lot better. So we're basically going to move our hard drive from this PC onto this PC. And then we're just gonna make it work. So this new system, it doesn't have a hard drive connected. We have an old hard drive down here, but it's disconnected. And this is where we're going to put our hard drive, there. So basically, it's easiest if you disconnect all other SATA devices, or if you have a hard drive that's attached to the motherboard, well, it should be something like somewhere there, uh, then it's an M2 drive, and that's of course faster. And if so, you should not connect any SATA stuff. Uh, if you do, you need to go to BIOS and select boot order, but if you just don't, you can just get away with having one of them plugged in and it just works. This is my current uh, computer here that I've been using, and I have one hard drive connected up, which is this one. My Samsung SSD, dusty and all. So basically, as you might imagine, we should drag out these cables and disconnect the SATA and disconnect the power. From the motherboard we have uh, the SATA connections right here and they go down and back here. So here we have the SATA connections sticking out, these ones, all of them. And uh, all the SATA connectors are basically the same. Uh, they have the same speed. Uh, this format, if they fit, they have the same speed. But um, yeah, there is a rating for uh, six gigabytes per second or whatever, and it doesn't do much. It's um, just th something to make you buy new cables. So uh, any, any of these cables that look fresh should work absolutely fine. So just plug in one of the cables into the SATA connector there and the power connector here. Power connector like that. And we may now insert it into this little tray. All right, so now you have to connect up your cables to your computer, which you had, you know, screen and everything and power and USB and stuff like that. So we can basically boot up this system. Now it's quite important that we have a connected internet to our computer so that it will be able to fetch new drivers and stuff automatically when we start up, if there are any problems. Windows 10 is very good at solving these problems itself. It seems to be booting. All right, so we completely missed that, but it said getting drivers ready and it now allows us to log in. And there we go. We're inside the computer and it seems to be working. All right, so booted into our computer, we need to do some stuff to set it up, basically. You can either install CPU seat to get the model of your motherboard, if you don't already know the model from reading from the motherboard. You can also do that, of course. Or you can do like this, right click on the Windows button and then you'll find PowerShell. And inside PowerShell, we will paste uh, this, little, uh, this little text here. VME baseboard get product manufacturer version serial number. I paste that in the description. And if we do that, we can see that, 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 that product manufacturer serial, serial number. We can get all the information about the motherboard we have. Now we need to find a web browser and search for those drivers. All right, so we just write in the manufacturer and model number of that motherboard that we have displayed in either CPU Zeet or in PowerShell like that. So we just uh, write in that there and then we add chipset drivers. And we try to go to the manufacturer's homepage, of course, and see where we can find some nice drivers. Onto their webpage, you should uh, find something that's called driver or support in this case. And then you'll click the download button. 
and then we need to select our operating system and we're running Windows 10 64-bit. So here on the download page we have the different types of drivers available for our operating system and uh, well this motherboard. So I will not download all of this but generally it's probably a good idea to uh, download at least most of them. Um, some of them might already be installed automatically by Windows when we booted into this, but uh, some of the drivers may not have been uh, come through, so we should just download all of them and install to make sure that we have the latest official version. Most of these are just exe files you can run, and I began with installing the ENF drivers. It however messed up that recording, so uh, anyways, we'll restart later. But it's basically just go into them like this, find an outrun and extract all, and then let it do that and then just install it. Install drivers and software. Accept the terms and click next. And then we'll have the drivers. It's nice. Some drivers and some software validating install. And there we have it. Just finish. We can view some properties later in the device manager. And we're gonna have to start it later. Very nice. Now we have installed all of these drivers right here. Now we need to do something else. We need to right click the Windows icon and click Device Manager. And on the Device Manager we have Display Drivers. So we have a GeForce GTX uh, 1080. And this is not the same uh, graphics card on my old motherboard since I basically just moved over my hard drive to a new system. So we should go in here and write in the uh, Drivers Advanced Search and then you have Advanced Drivers Search and then we go with uh, whatever we had here GeForce GTX 1080 Titan so here we have it right there download and just click to open it and it's now checking system compatibility and if you fail to download the correct drivers it will tell you there that you didn't download the correct drivers so I think that's pretty smart. Anyways, click uh, agree and continue, and then we can go with a custom install. And uh, in most cases, you don't need to perform a clean install, but since uh, I've moved my, uh, you know, since I've moved everything from the system, we might have old NVIDIA setup stuff going on there onto this uh, control panel so we would definitely want to perform a clean install because it will also remove some old drivers that we don't need so we just click clean install and click next all right and there you have it that's how to take your computer and upgrade everything without reinstalling Windows. Isn't that quite fantastic? So that's basically that. I hope it works good for you. It's possible you might get into some issues and upgrading the system without reinstalling Windows is not th something that's really recommended. People usually recommend to just reinstall Windows because it's more fail safe, but this is like the easy method and usually it works with the, without problems really. So, hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, please leave a like and uh, do subscribe to this channel. This is your host, Jumadesm, signing out.